Thank you. Um, I want to do something a little bit different. I want to start with a author that we don't often quote in sessions like this, Keith Richards, the guitarist for the Rolling Stones that you may have heard of. And he writes in his recent autobiography, I've learned everything I know off of records. Being able to replay something immediately with all, without all that terrible stricture of written music, the prison of those bars, those five lines, being able to hear recorded music freed up loads of musicians that couldn't necessarily afford to learn to read or write music, like me. Before 1900, you've got Mozart, Beethoven, Chopin, the Can Can. With recording, it was emancipation for the people. As long as you or somebody around you could afford a machine, suddenly you could hear music made by people, not set up rigs and symphony orchestras. It surely can't be any coincidences that jazz and blues started to take over the world the minute recording started, within a few years, just like that. Now that's basically what I'm going to argue, uh, is that the effect of a medium, uh, the phonograph, very much affected the musical landscape, and I want to focus on one genre in particular, which is jazz. There's been a lot of discussion of the effect of literacy, another medium that was invented about 500 years ago. Some even point to the printed page as the key to the rise of modernity. I want to focus on something a little bit different that's also had, I think, a profound difference, the phonograph. So I'm taking up the agenda introduced by Marshall McLuhan back in the 60s when he claimed that the medium is the message. But I'm doing that in a somewhat different way than McLuhan did. I want to highlight one aspect of how technology affects culture. And this goes back to our discussion a few weeks ago about technology and John Henry. That, um, that is that new technologies affect networks of who interacts with whom, when they interact, and where they interact. So there's a sort of mini theory here of the role of technology on networks of who, when, and where. Face-to-face -face interaction unfolds in what we call real time. Technology constraints, or technology, excuse me, changes the constraints of time and space. The written word and the answering machine of the telephone each enable us to change and control the time of interaction. They both displace time in some sense. The telegraph started the electronic revolution more than 150 years ago by being able to communicate instantaneously. It was the first medium that was able to do that. And it was incidentally the first digital medium. Um, in some sense, the later media were a step backwards in going from digital to analog communication. Mass communication profoundly expands and centralizes the circle of interaction. Instead of being able to interact with only as many people as could hear you shout, you could interact with millions of people at one time. But it also changed the relationship of interaction because it became one-way interaction, at least in, in the terms that it was used in our societies. So let's look at the phonograph, and I want to look at the phonograph, how the phonograph helped explain or facilitate the rise of a particular genre of jazz. The telephone was invented, the technology for the, gener for the telephone was really a side effect of trying to increase the technology for the telegraph. They were trying to have more than one signal sent over a wire at one time. So they had to be able to, to have multiple modulation over one wire at one time. That later became used by Edison for the, for the uh, phonograph. It was first marketed not for entertainment, but for business executives. Thomas Edison envisioned a paperless office in which instead of having files of paper, you would have boxes of cylinders that would have the communication um, that went from office to office.
And it was, but the technology was really not up to it. They just didn't work very well. Business, businessmen didn't buy it. But the phonograph did begin a great deal of discussion about how time was affected by the phonograph. And one of the main effects, one of the main benefits of the phonograph in, in the early days was that you could record the voices of the dead, um, both individuals and great people, that the people of the future would be able to hear voices like Teddy Roosevelt, whereas we, they had no voices of Abraham Lincoln. And there was, and there was in fact, a, a great emphasis on this, this fact of transcending dead people. Uh, RCA uh, did it by having a picture of a little dog with a caption, his master's voice. That was taken from a painting, a real painting. It was a real dog named Nipper. Um, and it was a picture of Nipper on the top of a coffin. And the caption, his master's voice, tried to show a dog hearing his master's voice after the master was gone. And this was widely interpreted as a way to conquer time. OK, um, after the, the phonograph didn't work as a business machine, they found that people were curious to pay money to listen to it. So uh, they started to use it for Nickelodeons. And at that point, they also changed the technology. The original phonograph was a playback, uh, was a recording and a playback device. When they put it into the Nickelodeon, it became only a playback device, uh, very much affecting the way that, te uh, that that technology would fit into networks. When it became a household item in the early 20th century, the who of that network were upper class people, middle class people. The what was classical music. Okay. And the where was bringing European culture to the, uh, to the U.S. The first uh, superstar of the court recording era was Enrico Caruso. After World War I, um, there were economic changes that allowed new companies, new independent phonograph companies, to start recording people that were, had not been a part of the original network, and that is uh, African Americans. And they took music that had been local, made it national, uh, so they're changing both the who and the where and the when of recorded music. But jazz was a new kind of music. Jazz did not spread through musical notation as conventional music had. Jazz diffused through listening. And so the, it meant that the, the kind of music and the features of music that became desirable were very different that with notation, it's the harmony, it's the melody, it's the rhythm. With jazz, it's the timbre, the way the instruments actually sound, um, and improvisation. Uh, when you learn to play by notation, you don't learn to improvise. When you learn to play by ear, improv improvisation became a central part of the music. So you had a new kind of music being specified by a new kind of medium. Um, OK, what's the relevance for now? Uh, the relevance for now is that we're again going through a technological transformation that's very parallel to the rise of the phonograph, that the internet is very much affecting the who and the where and the when of music. The phonograph helped bring about a, a musical landscape that was based on genres. Um, before the phonograph, when, when you looked at uh, music catalogs, they had things like piccolo solos and trumpet duets. Uh, throughout the phonograph era, from about the 1920s to the end of the 20th century, it was a landscape based on genres. New technologies are changing that. Uh, it's not clear exactly how. If you listen to Pandora, genres are irrelevant. You tell Pandora, what, uh, auth what kind of composer or piece you want to listen to, and it finds music for you. iTunes, on the other hand, is still based on genres. When you go on iTunes, they have a list of, of different sounds. We don't know, you know 
what will win out, whether there will be some sort of new mixture. We don't know what sort of genres will arise. We can imagine that for sure there's going to be unimagined genres just the same way that jazz was unimagined in 1900, but it's too soon to say. Uh, but we do know that there's going to be changes. And I just want to close by, by emphasizing that even though I've talked only about the technology here, that the institutional structure, the things like intellectual property, the larger social structures, especially of race, were absolutely central to the rise of jazz. Any complete uh, analysis of the, of the rise of jazz would have to give those factors at least as much attention. Um, I just focused here on the technology because that's what we're talking about. But I want us to remember that in the, in the larger scheme of things, the technology always interacts with the larger institutional structure and social, larger social relationships such as, such as race.